Hi, welcome back to Abnormal. We're going to look at treatment and we're going to be looking at the treatment regarding addictions disorder. So treatments for this disorder is really quite challenging as many users don't want to end the use of their drug and alcohol use and it's often that um, they're not the ones that are seeking out the help. Usually there's other people who are trying to help out. So when people do enter treatment, they are visiting offices to receive treatment. However, the environmental and psychological factors can strongly influence a relapse due to withdrawal syndrome. So let's start with the biological approaches and looking at treatments. Biological approaches to substance use disorders include detoxification. Now this is a process of ridding the body of alcohol and drugs. Now this is supervised, it's monitored, and in an attempt to, contr uh, to control the symptoms. So it's often done, in fact it's done in hospitals. Also included in the biological approach to treatment uh, is the use of uh, dis dysuferum. Now it's a and methadone and um, naloxalone um, are an antidepressants. Now I'm sorry about the struggle on those. I am having to read off of a script down here rather than up on my teleprompters. I'm, I'm sorry it somehow it's kind of got a little glitchy. So bear with me. And the nicotine replacement therapy is the other one. So let's consider each of them. Um, Desulfiram is a brand name of Antabuse. Uh, or you might know it as the alcohol patch. And it produces an adverse reaction <laughs> to drinking alcohol. When that adverse reaction kicks in, you're going to feel nauseous. Um, vomiting, sweating, rapid heart rate, and a reduced blood pressure. You need to be very... Um, it, this all can be very useful as it gives you regular feedback on your use. But you also have to be very careful. Nicotine replacement therapy is a method of helping people to quit smoking. Interestingly, uh, this method seems to help men more than women. Nicotine replacement therapy helps to quiet, quiet down the physiological symptoms of withdrawal. Methadone maintenance programs are a use of a th synthetic opiate, that's what methadone is, and it's used for heroin addiction. It does come with its own risk. You could become addicted to methadone. So it needs to be monitored very carefully and through an outpatient or hospital setting. Um, naloxalone and um, naloxalone and nalexeron are sister drugs that block the effect of heroin and other opiates. Now one form of treatment you may have heard are those referred to non-professional support groups. Now this is a slightly different direction. It's moving out of the biological. But like I've mentioned in another, a number of others that biological along with other cognitive, psychological, learning or behavioral approaches can be very effective. So these non-professional support groups, these would be like um, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Cocaine Anonymous, where they promote abstinence with a supportive group setting. The most widely used non-professional program, Alcoholics Anonymous, is based on the belief that alcoholism is a disease, not a sin, <laughs> and uses a 12-step program. Now the success rate is really kind of difficult to determine as these groups don't keep records of the members and they don't conduct control studies for the programs. Now we can next move into what are known as resi residential approaches. Now residential treatment approaches include hospitals and therapeutic communities. These will be communities whose primary focus is on the kinds of therapy that they may specialize in. Outpatient treatment is less costly 
and often indicated with, with when withdrawal symptoms are less severe. Withdrawal symptoms can be very significant and can interfere with treatment. So when they're less severe, these residential approaches may be more effective. Clients then are committed to changing their behavior and the environmental support systems, such as families. They strive to help the client make this transition into a drug-free lifestyle. Now this could take a fair bit of time because you're fighting some physiological, then psychological interference with your ability to get healthy again. So some of the other approaches that we would couple the biological with would include the psychological approaches. Psycho psychodynamic therapists will focus on uncovering, as you should be able to remember by now, these are uncovering inner conflicts originating in childhood that are believed to be the root of substance abuse disorders. Now we've already expressed that some of the psychodynamic approaches are rooted in some things that are based on Freud that wasn't strong in its research, but this early look at childhood experiences, not to sort of filter it through Freud's work, but to say that there are things that can happen in our early lives that can contribute to things that occur in our later lives. Moving into the cognitive or behavioral approaches, behavior therapists, they focus on helping people with substance, um, substance use related disorders by changing problem behaviors through such techniques as self-control training. So managing your, I, I feel the need to go out and get something, but managing that is this change problem behaviors through self-control training, social skills training, Q exposure training, so what triggers me and then manage that with a training program and motivational enhancement therapy or MET. Now self-control therapies, we'll start with there, these strategies follow an ABC or antecedent, which is the trigger, the thing that leads to the behavior, the abusive behavior or the, the addictive behavior, and then the consequences, what is the reinforcement for the behavior. As a means to gain control of the change of their abusive behavior, they get a, a log, if you will, they keep a diary of ABC. And over time, it starts to bring a pattern to mind. You know, what are the antecedents? What are the triggers that seem to be consistent when I engage in this behavior? What are the behaviors that I'm engaged in? And what are the consequences? You know, the patterns of things that reinforce my continued use of drugs. If we are to look at the social skills training, now these can include things like assertiveness training, standing up to your committed new behavior and being able to do so in a healthy way. Couples therapy, sometimes having this therapy done, your treatment done with your partner can help with the development of strategies and success. And this helps also with identifying triggers and supports through behavioral contracts. Behavioral contracts will be basically, this is what I say I will do, and this is what you say you will do to support me. And that's an agreement that you're both making with one another. Now, Q exposure training. This is the type of training where you show some promise more recently. Here a person is exposed to their abusive substance. You produce some alcohol or a particular drug and are prevented from using it. In other words, they are attempting to extinguish the person's response or their learned response to the drugs or alcohol. Now the MET, as was mentioned, that's the Motivational Enhancement Therapy. This therapy is designed to create intrinsic, so internally motivated motivations, intrinsic, not external, from within, to want to change. To be able to get to the point where the person can say, I want to change my behavior. You cannot make someone change. So without their permission, you can't make them change. So helping them gain this intrinsic reasoning will enable and help them get to a better place, which means the therapist is always attempting to convince the patient to participate, um, to to find their own reasons to want to engage. And that's a process that takes some time, but it is showing some good promise as well. Now, as a result 
of what often happens for many people at least with alcohol and drug dependencies is a relapse and so relapse training is a useful and beneficial strategy regardless of the initial success of a treatment technique relapse means a pressing problem in treating people with substance use disorders. Relapse prevention training employs cognitive and behavioral, so thinking and doing, techniques to help those in recovery cope with the high-risk situations and to prevent relapses from becoming, or lapses becoming relapses. By helping participants to interpret what these lapses could look like and how they can be less damaging by changing your behavior. Now we've completed this review on substance, re substance related and addictive disorders. It is, as I'm sure many of other disorders, they're complex in our understanding and it can cause the interconnectedness of treatments. So you may need to use more than just one to, you know, to work with this. So I hope you've gained something from this chapter. And we will be reviewing chapter 9, Gender Dysphoria, Paraphilic Disorder, and Sexual Dysfunction in Week 9. So we'll see you there. Keep up the good work, everybody. Bye now.